హలో ఎవ్రీవన్ వెల్కమ్ టు మై యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ లాజిక్ మెడికల్ టుడేస్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ టాపిక్ ఈస్ యూస్టేషియన్ ట్యూబ్ డిస్ఫంక్షన్ సో ఇస్ ఆస్ యూ ఆల్రెడీ నో ద యూస్టేషియన్ ట్యూబ్ కనెక్ట్స్ ద నేజో ఫెరెంగ్స్ టు ద మిడిల్ ఇయర్ క్యావిటీ అండ్ ఇట్ వెంటిలేట్స్ ద మిడిల్ ఇయర్ క్యావిటీ ఇట్ మెయింటైన్స్ ద ప్రెషర్ ఆన్ ఐదర్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ ద టింఫానిక్ మెంబ్రెయిన్ సో దట్ ద టింఫానిక్ మెంబ్రెయిన్ ఈస్ ఆప్టిమమ్ ఇన్ పొజిషన్ సో దట్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ కెన్ హియర్ బెటర్ also the mucus membrane of this middle ear cavity produces mucus that will be drained into the nasopharynx via eustachian tube what if these functions of the eustachian tube is not performed what will happen understanding the dysfunction the causes of the dysfunction and the treatment options available for the eustachian tube dysfunction all these will cover up in this video come to the first slide eustachian tube this is the eustachian tube you can see that it's running downwards forwards and medially opening into the nasopharynx connecting the nasopharynx to the middle ear cavity or the tympanic membrane so it acts as a passage a narrow passage it is a fibroelastic cartilage in the medial part and bony in the lateral part first closer to the bone it permits the air to enter into the middle ear cavity thereby equalizing the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane or ear drum so this eustachian tube in addition to all these roles is also called as auditory tube why it helps in better audition or hearing because by maintaining the pressure within the middle ear it maintains the tympanic membrane in good condition or optimum condition so that neither the tympanic membrane is too tensed or too much stretched nor it is too lax so thereby helps in audition or hearing therefore it's called auditory tube it is also called by one more name can i guess it connects the pharynx to the tympanic cavity i have given a clue pharyngo tympanic tube because it connects the nasopharynx specifically speaking the lateral wall of nasopharynx to the tympanic cavity the anterior wall of the tympanic cavity so that is the other names of eustachian tube kindly remember auditory tube pharyngo tympanic tube if any of these three questions are asked the answer will be the same they are trying to ask eustachian tube now the functions of the eustachian tube it mainly performs three important functions it helps in the ventilation of the middle ear because middle ear on all the sides there are bony walls the superior wall the inferior wall the anterior the medial wall is cochlear is the lateral wall is not bony but it is membrane it is membranous it's made up of tympanic membrane but still all the walls are closed so it is a closed chamber on all sides except by a window is present in the anterior wall through which ventilation is possible air can enter the middle ear cavity through eustachian tube it helps in maintaining the pressure equalization on either side of the tympanic membrane this pressure is already maintained by external auditory canal whatever is the environment pressure the same pressure will be there in the outside the tympanic membrane so if the air enters through this eustachian tube into the middle ear the same pressure will be there even in the middle ear cavity also the mucus which is produced by the mucus membrane of the tympanic cavity will be drained into the nasopharynx So when does this eustachian tube opens it opens during the following activity doing chewing so whenever you are chewing mastication you know each time you are clenching your jaw that time there is opening of the eustachian tube thereby ventilating the middle ear also swallowing when you swallow the food from the oral cavity goes into the oropharynx soft palate will be elevated okay the muscles of the soft palate will dilate this will take origin near this eustachian tube so it will dilate the eustachian tube so the food will not enter the eustachian tube but the eustachian tube will open and the air in the nasopharynx will enter okay because nasopharynx is cut off from the oropharynx by soft palate okay during swallowing and one most important thing is during yawning so whenever you have closed your mouth for nearly 25 to 30 minutes and you are listening to someone for example in a class you are listening to a teacher you have not opened your mouth so what happens the air in the middle ear cavity is being utilized or absorbed so there will be retraction of tympanic membrane and you can't hear well that time what happens you will 
so that there is tornado of air entering your middleware cavity through eustachian tube thereby pushing back this tympanic membrane to its optimum position it will not be retracted anymore it will be optimum so that you can hear better but what usually the teachers think when you are yawning they usually think you are trying to sleep actually speaking you are not trying to sleep you are trying to hear okay so next time any teacher scolds you you can try to explain this eustachian tube function it helps in ventilation of middle ear through yawning and making the tympanic membrane optimum position so that you can hear the teacher better so when the eustachian tube does not open so until now i learned all the physiological functions of eustachian tube when it does not open properly that's that's where the disease called as eustachian tube dysfunction okay means so the disordered function okay so when it does not open what can happen this we'll understand better with an example when you are taking off in a flight when it's, when you are taking off from the land you know flying in the air what do you think happens to the atmospheric pressure at a higher level what do you think it is more or less guess if you guess less then it's correct so atmospheric pressure at a higher level is pressure is lower so when it is lower on the external side the pressure starts building within the tympanic cavity so kindly understand i will tell you one more time when you take off in a flight the atmosphere pressure is lower on the external side so the pressure starts building on the internal side that is within the tympanic cavity or the middle ear so thereby bulging the tympanic membrane outwards following which what happens the eustachian tube opens so when it opens what happened the pressure which has built over here the air is going to please observe this beautiful thing the air is going to come out like this into your pharynx so air is going to come out like this into your pharynx like a similar to a burp it is like the burping of the tympanic cavity via eustachian tube so this burping will have one sound like this it's like a snap snap in your ear some people actually can hear that sound people just feel that the air is coming out of the middle ear cavity so it's like the burping of the middle ear cavity through eustachian tube all this i'm telling is normal function of the eustachian tube if this doesn't happen for the person with eustachian tube dysfunction so when when they are taking off from the flight they will have severe ear ache because the pressure starts building within the middle ear to such an extent that be almost bulging the tympanic membrane to the core and sometimes even rupture of the tympanic membrane can happen if it doesn't open at all whatsoever okay so the air will come out like a burp what do you think will happen when you are trying to land when trying to land the pressure on the external environment is increased so when pressure in the external environment is increased the pressure inside the middle ear cavity getting decreased when it is decreased there is a retraction of the tympanic membrane when there is a retraction or pulling in because pressure here is more right so it will push this tympanic membrane inside the pressure here is less of course so thereby it is retracted or pulled in so what should happen during this time also the eustachian tube should open why so that the air in your nasopharynx will move like this please observe this beautiful animation air should move in like this ventilating your middle ear cavity if it doesn't then even while landing the patient will have problem that is they get severe ear ache now this time the ear ache is due to the retraction of tympanic membrane that is pulling in of the tympanic membrane so i hope you understood that what is eustachian tube dysfunction there is a problem in equalizing the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane that is the basic problem in eustachian tube dysfunction either while taking off the tympanic membrane will bulge out or while landing the tympanic membrane will be retracted causing intense severe pain in the middle ear for the patient with eustachian tube dysfunction so what are the causes for eustachian tube dysfunction huh? anatomical causes what are the anatomical causes for eustachian tube dysfunction any problem either the bony lesion or a soft tissue lesion in the vitreous part of temporal bone or in the nasopharynx can result in blockage of eustachian tube what are the any surgical procedure involving in the nasopharynx 
okay either to remove the polyp or the adenoids or nasopharyngeal carcinoma it can damage the elastic cartilage of the eustachian tube resulting in scarring so when scarring happens this will become narrowed down so scarring of the eustachian tube eustachian tube cannot open normally thereby eustachian tube dysfunction other cause adenoid the enlargement of the nasopharyngeal tonsil will press upon the eustachian tube and causes this to block that is usually in pediatric age group it's called as adenoids these patients will have classical adenoid phases in which there will be pinched up nostril okay and upper lip is always bulging out and the teeth are not well developed crooked teeth will be there high arched parrot palate palate high arched palate with oral breathing because of oral breathing the child will have halitosis that is foul smelling breath will be there so because it cannot breathe through the nose because of huge tonsil here that's called adenoids next nasopharyngeal carcinoma or a tumor in the nasopharynx this usually happens in smokers especially the hookah smokers they will get nasopharyngeal carcinoma in the rosenmuller fossa first symptom or the disorder they have is eustachian tube dysfunction so you have to examine the nasopharynx carefully to rule out a tumor in a smoker whoever presents if you have a smoker and they have eustachian tube that ear ache because they never taking off or landing in the flight we should suspect a tumor in the nasopharynx and examine them carefully otherwise we will miss out on the case what are the other causes of eustachian tube dysfunction any edema in this level that is at the level of eustachian tube in the nasopharynx can block the ventilation of middle ear any allergic condition allergic rhinitis sinusitis huh? rhinitis means inflammation of the nose sinusitis means inflammation of paranasal sinuses too much of liquid will come and those liquid will block this eustachian tube and even the mucosa will be edematous or swollen pharyngitis that is inflammation of the pharynx itself can block the eustachian tube so any condition which is resulting in edema either the allergy or the inflammation in the surrounding area that is in the nose it's called rhinitis in the paranasal area sinuses which is called sinusitis in the pharyngeal wall it's called pharyngitis any condition which is causing edema in the eustachian tube will block the eustachian tube and block the normal functioning of the eustachian tube that means it doesn't allow the eustachian tube to open whenever required so other causes main causes especially in smoker the cilia and the mucus in the smoker will be damaged especially the cilia so when it is damaged the mucociliary beat meaning the cilia will beat towards the nose okay from the throat towards the nose it will beat it will bring the dust particles towards the nose side so that it can be or towards the throat side so that it can be coughed out but the damage to the cilia results in accumulation of the mucus in the throat as well as in the middle ear cavity resulting in eustachian tube dysfunction so kindly remember damage to the cilia that is the lining epithelium of the pharynx and the eustachian tube will especially during smoking because of the toxic damage the mucus tends to accumulate in middle ear cavity and in the pharynx so what are the treatment options available for eustachian tube dysfunction it is very simple we have to treat the underlying cause if there is allergy we have to treat the allergy if there is rhinitis the common cold we have to treat that if there is sinusitis we have to treat that if there is adenoids we have to remove that tonsil nasopharyngeal tonsil if there is nasopharyngeal carcinoma we have to excise the tumor and do radiation therapy upper respiratory tract infection we have to treat appropriately if it is a bacterial infection we have to give antibacterial fungal infection anti fungal okay viral infection anti viral drugs okay and nasal decongestion is very very effective to relieve the edema congestion means edema in the mucosa causing a block decongestion will relieve the edema thereby causing better ventilation or opening of the eustachian tube better ventilation of the middle ear cavity so nasal decongestion plays a very important role steroids are the anti inflammatory drugs the sign of inflammation are swelling pain okay and redness all these signs of inflammation will be reduced once we start on steroids tympanostomy tube so what is this tympanostomy tube okay due to any reason this eustachian tube cannot be open from this side last resort is tympanostomy we will place a tube in this area in the tympanic membrane area so that it can ventilate from outside that is the logic behind tympanostomy tube like and share this video with your family and friends and subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification you have to press the bell button so that every day you will get my video notification
Thank you once again.